it's Jack here from Jack Murray TV. Today I'm with Daddy, and today we have a special guest, Nathan from Green Lions TV. He covers York Nine, and we are going to be talking about York Nine with Nathan today. Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. Uh, I'm looking forward to this. It should be a lot of fun. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah, because we saw you online. Um, we have a site called CPL Fever, so we're starting to cover uh, the CPL, and we saw that you are, are covering York Nine, and so we wanted to, to uh, you know, get get some feedback from you about that, about the league, what's yeah. going on. Actually, it's, it's interesting. I'm wearing the little green to support York oh, Nine nice. here, yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, and in our kit review, we, we recently reviewed the kits on our on our channel, and I gave York Nine the what was it the second second yeah, place second yeah place as well. second best kit the, yeah uh, for the the twenty twenty kits so me too. not not first not first not no. first no we, we, I, I I couldn't give it first because because we actually gave that to the to uh, the Wanderers just because I just think having like the song waveforms on the on the thing was just such yeah. a cool idea. Yeah, you know? it's a really cool design. I like it too. Um, but. Yeah, though I yeah. really like um, the York Nine kit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love the black collar. I love the green and white. Yeah. So starting things off, Nathan, like, how did you get interested in the in the CPL? Um. So I live in Mississauga, and um, I'm sure you guys have heard of the Saga City Collective. It's like a supporters group. Um, they're trying to push for a CPL team in Mississauga. Um, and then slowly from there, like I was going to school at York University, and obviously York 9 was playing at York University. So that's kind of how I got the idea of like, trying to support York 9. And then Ryan Telfer, a player who I really like liked at TFC, as soon as he got loaned to York 9, I knew, like, okay, now I can see how Ryan Telfer performs at a team where he's probably going to be the best player. And then that's how I really got into it. I really like this kind of grassroots, like Canadian players. I love Canadian soccer. So, yeah, that's how I pretty much so you must yeah. So you must have been excited where three minutes into the very first game of the season, or the, the inaugural thing, Ryan, Ryan Telfer comes in and, and scores. It's like, whoa, how did that happen so fast? Yeah, I, I was not expecting a goal to happen that fast. I was a bit disappointed with the commentator, Gareth Wheeler. He said Cyrus Rollins instead. But Did he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you watch the, I think the highlights back, he gets the name wrong. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, that's but interesting. Yeah, I think, um, yeah I, think, I think Ryan Telfer was one of the only players I was really aware of going into the CPL too. Because of of TFC, yeah. Um, My parents. I think I've seen him yeah. play with with TFC. Yeah. Because that's yeah. probably like you know like, what's good about the MLS or what I really like about the MLS is when the European soccer is like over for like this long period and all there is is like transfer rumors and you know news and nothing really happening, then the MLS is like in full swing, right? Yeah, yeah. And, I love um, transfer rumors, by the way. <laughs> And and in the last few years, like you've you've uh, you've seen, like Toronto's been really good. Um, they've had a, they've had a good team. They've played you know some exciting games. They've had some phenomenal um, you know runs in the in the playoffs. And yeah, so I like that's what I'd watch um, during the during the season. Yeah, because my and then they have some are... great players with like like Javinko and yes, and Altidore. Javinko. And, I really like Asorio and, and yeah. I really like Asorio and Javinko, but my parents are actually from Toronto originally, oh. so when the when so they're kind of like like soccer like so that's their team like TFC TFC. Yeah, so we MLS. took yeah, so we actually took a trip. What was it? Not this last summer, but the summer before to Toronto, and we caught mm -hmm. that was one of the things we saw a TFC game. Yeah. Unfortunately, it was the one. Where Josie Altidore took a red card at the ninth or tenth minute. Oh man! <laughs> and so they were playing like defense the whole time, yeah. and they almost won. It ended up being three two, like uh, three two New York City FC. But and they would have won, but you know it was just, you know, yeah. we didn't get to see Vasquez really, you know, get to get to be offensive because. 
Yeah, yes, I, I yeah, went for a game where they were playing Columbus Crew, and I think the score was like 5-2, and it's just Vasquez and Osorio in the midfield just ran the whole show. There are some of the passes that Vasquez could make, you're just looking at it, it's like, I've never seen TFC play like this before. Yeah. So it was really nice to see, like, TFC, they're now at, like, the top level. Everyone looks at TFC as, like, the top team in North America, so. Yeah. Yeah, cool, cool. So, um, so you, you started following York Nine because you're going to, to York University. Yeah. Um, and do you like? How do you find? Do you have friends that, that that are also interested in soccer that that go, or do you find that like there's a, a lot of support because there's students there at York? I to be honest, at school, not really. I think this is a problem that York had York 9 had a real problem with is kind of getting students who are so close to actually follow a team. You go to, if you talk to people on campus, everyone knows who TFC are, but no, not many people know who York 9 are, and they're actually playing right next to us. So for me, it was, I, I knew York 9, and I started to meet with other people, and I met this guy, his name was Zach Diaz, and he's actually the founder of Green Lions. He's the one who's been trying to get like student support for York Nine. So from there, then I met a bunch of people, like other students, and then we just started this group. We're trying to like bridge the gap between the students and the club, because the club, to be honest, they weren't doing much in their first uh, season to kind of get students and get their fan base, who are literally right there. In my opinion. The students should be targeted because we're playing right there, and yeah, it's it's it was hard in the beginning to find like fans on the campus, but now now I think it's better. They're doing a lot of like student deal promotion with their seat, like yeah. uh, season ticket and stuff. So yeah, I'm, it's getting better, but in the beginning it wasn't there. So yeah. So do you find that a lot of uh, like are there a lot of I was going to say adults, but a lot of like post post university, like like older people going or what's what's the what's the makeup of the of the audience? I think the majority of the audience is kids who play in local soccer teams. They're just going with their families like on the random weekend. I wouldn't say there isn't like a general like there's not like an older kind of fan group, but like in the first year, I think we had the worst attendances in the whole league, and it was that it was like it, you weren't really the team wasn't really trying to create like that big fan support. We were more of like, okay, we've got to focus. I think the whole mindset after talking to people in the club at first year was like, fans will come when you start performing well. And in my opinion, I don't know if that was the right way to go, which is why, like, now we find, like, there are so many supporters groups starting up themselves. We have Green Lions is one. Dames of York is another women's supporters gl- club of York 9. It's, it's now they're trying to, like, the club president and all, they're trying to reach out to people to try and get support from everyone. Yeah, and Like, in were, the first season, yeah. yeah. And you had a question for us that, why um why Halifax had gotten one of the best attendances and my take on this is that Nova Scotia is so small we just have like one million people Mm -hmm. um we just have one million people and so we take so we take pride in who we are and it's part of the culture but also we love local like we love lo- we love everything local. Like it's just something about us because mm-hmm. there's not like these big like corporations. We just love local. Yeah. I love local. I know that. <laughs> and there, I felt like the city of Halifax did try and get their supporters there because we also wanted the team to stay. Like we wanted a team because if you think about it, it's amazing that Nova Scotia even has a team. <laughs> Hmm, because yeah. we're so tiny, so the the privateers, our fan group, we, they did a lot of things like we had marches to the match. I always wanted to go to them, but 
I was a ball boy, which I loved. Um, so I was always like, what well, I always watched everybody come in, and it was so exciting. Just all of the excitement you could see it on everybody's faces they couldn't wait for the game to start they couldn't wait for the kickoff mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean i think i think with halifax i don't know if if we have the well i guess vancouver island would be a smaller population probably there's about three hundred thousand in 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 halifax so it's relatively small but also when you think about that like it's a metropolitan area that doesn't really have access to a lot of major sports teams, right? Yeah. Um, like there's the Halifax Mooseheads if you're into hockey, but you know there's not like a lot of 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 opportunity. So I think when you know they they got this opportunity, a lot of people just decided. And I'd say some of, even even some of the super fans weren't really into soccer before. But they kind of wanted to adopt it, and we had a couple super fans in particular that you know came up with crazy costumes, like this guy that yeah. dresses like a like a pirate, a guy that and, dresses um, like a, with a like Roman a gladiator. gladiator shield. It's, I love that costume, and like, and, and like a blue face and stuff, and you know, it's it just kind of like was something that that the community could could kind of rally behind. So I think that you know part of it is we're we're lucky in that in that sense that you know we really wanted a sports team and the the community was really hungry for it and you know now we've kind of built up a reputation where you know all the all the traveling teams say like it's a great atmosphere to play in even yeah. though you know yeah. it's against us it's like it's yeah. just this vibe that's part and, of the reason why duran lee came from vaughn when because he kind of wanted to come because the atmosphere was crazy whenever the wanderers score there's like blue smoke everybody everybody's up on their feet and even when there's um not a goal we have we have so many chants and it kind of reminds me of like these big football teams in like england and stuff sunderland in fact because we're watching this documentary called sunderland till i die and i really like this TV show and I really like it. And it kind of reminds me of Sunderland. It's also, it's also a really good location, Nathan, cause it's, it's, I don't know how they got this space. Cause it's kind of in the middle of, it's just in the like upper downtown. Mm -hmm. And there's just this like, kind of like empty space that was big enough to build this, this soccer pitch on it and it's grass, but it's walkable from downtown. So, you know, you have a lot of the people that will, you know, maybe, you know, hit a, hit a bar or two, you know, on the, on the crawl on the way and just kind of make a whole like event of it. Um, yeah. And Halifax is just a great city for walking anyhow. You know, I've lived in, in Toronto and I, you know, I mean, I just hate traffic, you know what I mean? <laughs> so that would be a deterrent yeah. for me to, 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 to go out. I mean, even, even when we were staying in Toronto and we went down to, watch TFC like I didn't enjoy that drive downtown <laughs> yeah you know I find traffic quite annoying like I don't like long lines like I I I went to um Orlando once where Disneyland is and like all these big attractions but I was training with like a retired professional soccer player and, and my mom was like do you want to go and I'm like no, there's too many long lines. Like Disney World just has too many long lines. My cousins love to go all of them. They're like, this is so much fun. And I'm like, a, ro a ride with a long line. Like, yeah, too much, too much crowd for you. Yeah. 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 I, I think, so my question was more like, do you guys feel like Halifax, the Wanderers are kind of like, what are they doing right to kind of reach out to the community? Because I think, like, I think that's what York and I struggled with. Like, right. yeah, like you guys have a great town and we're hungry, but I've heard like there's players in the malls every week to try and like get people to support the team. What do you guys feel like the club has done for you guys to kind of pull your support? Well, we've well, they've there have been a lot of fan events because our sponsor is Volkswagen. Well, at least that's like a German way to say it, Volkswagen. Um, we, there's there's been like there there's been quite a few events at Volkswagen, Volkswagen. And the marketing works because yeah. when when my other son, the little the little guy, he's four. Mm -hmm. When he sees the Volkswagen logo, 
he says, hey, that's the Wanderer's he car. He says, hey, that's the Wanderer's. <laughs> so marketing works out there, people, <laughs> at least on four-year-olds. <laughs> yeah, and there are players that come. like, And also, to a lot of like the like under nines and under tens and elevens, like that age group, a lot of the Wanderers go and to their practices. Like they go oh. to the practices, like every like every once in a while, like every player has gone to at least one practice. Oh, yeah, wow. that's that's really nice. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. York, York has started, started to do that now recently. But yeah, yeah that's, that's that's great. great. Have you which player do you, like have you met any a lot of them or? Uh, since I'm a ball boy, yeah, I actually met Juan Diego Gutierrez like when he had come into Halifax. Like mm-hmm. before they had even started playing, so he was like my fan favorite because I'd met him first. But yeah, I really yeah, yeah, and yeah, we know quite a few of the players. Yeah, it's we it's lucky about. because yeah, it's lucky because he's a ball boy, so we go we go early. He gets you don't usually see them too much before. Yeah, but, but, but we ran into the Ox Christian Oxner just. Walking, oh, nice. yeah. just walking along so we like walk a little faster and we like hey, can I get a picture and you know just just uh walking to get ready um but because he's a ball boy you know sometimes you know he just kind of hang around and wait till they come out of the dressing room so we actually got to talk to like a few of them which yeah which is really special you know what i mean because i think especially for him because you know when you have someone that's like he's really good at soccer he wants to be a professional soccer player and just him being able to like, you know, talk to these guys yeah. Yeah. for like a couple minutes, you know, it's just, it's, it, it's, it, yeah. they're accessible in a way where, you know, you can't, um, like players in the MLS, you know, you, you go to a TFC game, you're, you're not going to talk to players except somehow I saw a picture of you and, and uh, Pogba. Yeah. So you must have great connections too. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's just a great opportunity just, you know, to, to connect with with them yeah yeah that's that's awesome that you get to be a ball boy at the wanderers that must be so much fun yeah and even when i only sat in the stands once but when i did it was just so it was just so nice like everyone was cheering everyone was talking about how they think that today is the day that we're gonna win today is the day that we're gonna win and it was just really nice to be in the stands. One time we even met uh, uh, that that one time we even met Alex De Carolis's family. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, and it's yeah. really nice because like the players come over to the stand, so even like you get to talk to them, even if even if you're not, you'd get to talk to them even if you're not a ball boy. It's not like MLS when there's like so many seats and. You it's yeah, like super I, rare when you get to talk to someone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in the MLS there's also a lot of security. Like even if you do go to like in TFC there's like this little like tunnel club almost and every time you walk by to try and like say hi to the players as they come into the stadium, it's always like everyone's like security's watching you and the players kinda of just they don't get much time to interact with the fans. Mm-hmm. Which I think why MLS and the gap between kids here in Toronto and some of the people they look up to is so big. And and I think I think that would be a good thing for York Nine to do if they if they if they do that because you know if the if if they have the players come to like, co you know coach or or just show up for like a practice you know that's mm-hmm. going to make all those kids days you know and yeah. and all those parents are going to be you know kind of a little bit more engaged. And mm-hmm. if they have, um, I think Halifax did a couple like meet and greets where they'd actually let the fans onto the field, onto the field, like at the end of the game. They did that like a couple times. Yeah, right? they did that two or three times. Two or so three times, and you could just go. And I think that creates this kind of connection because it allows the people that are to to make a deeper connection with some of these players. You know, get mm-hmm. a picture and then. You know they're gonna post it all over social media. And, yeah. You know all that stuff, and and yeah. it it just kind of brings some goodwill. So I think that that's yeah. The Wanderers also strategy. before the game they like say on their speaker, take a picture with you and your friends and tag us for this, and if and we'll pick a winner randomly, and you'll get this like prize pack. So even yeah, it's just a great community. 
Yeah, yeah that's, that's that's really nice, nice to hear that the, the teams are doing that because I think Halifax really set the bar in terms of that community connection, and I think a lot of teams now are looking at, like, how can we recreate that for our own team? So, yeah, that's, that's really nice. Like, you guys must enjoy it. Yeah, and that's one of the things that I'm I'm concerned about this upcoming season because you know with the whole delay due to due to COVID, you know what I mean. Like I don't know the finances of the of the league, but I feel like in a lot of ways because I I met I, I think I met the commissioner at at uh, one of the games and stuff uh, just kind of randomly. And you also was, met Derek Martin, the founder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but I think it did I think it did really well. Um, and in a lot of ways exceeded expectations. Yeah. But obviously, you know, with the season being delayed, you know, it's a new league, you know, there must be a lot of financial pressures just on everything. You know yeah. what I mean? Like mm-hmm. they're, they're pushing wage cuts and deferments through on like the major leagues and stuff. So it's, I don't know, it's hopefully everything gets sorted. Yeah. He also yeah. met Jeff Paulus because it's like two hours before the, the game because it's just such a small city. Well, he's yeah, he's the, he's the coach of Edmonton, and he he's originally from Halifax. I, oh, I, I found I that, that out yeah. when I was talking to him. But I like, yeah. you know, just kind of ran in, ran into him on the street there, and yeah. uh, you know, because I'm I have to drop this guy off early. It's a ball boy, and then I have yeah, some two time hours to, early. <laughs> time to kill. Oh man, two hours! Wow. Yeah. So you just yeah. you, so you really you just. Wait until your duty starts. You look at the field. You look at you look at the field, and you just can't wait for the players to go on. <laughs> yeah. It would be cool if you guys could make a video about like a ball boy experience at Wanderers. That would be a really cool video to watch. Yeah, yeah we should. Yeah, we should. That's a good idea. And I also wanted to ask you. Who is going to be the dark horse for York 9? So who is going to be the most underrated player? Dark horse, I'm, I'm thinking it's the new guy, Fugo Sagawa. Fugo He's, Sagawa. Uh, okay. the Japanese um, fullback. Yeah. The reason I say this is because um, Diadina Hamsi was tutored to go with the Olympic squad for yeah. qualifying. Yeah. And I feel that... Sagawa would, would fit would just jump into that left back spot and he's got so much technical ability and and he's still very young but he's has has a lot of experience playing over there in Europe. Yeah, I heard I that. Think, yeah, yeah. I heard that. So I think this might be time like I I don't want to say this, but I feel like Sagawa might be that perfect replacement for Abzi because I know Abzi is being scouted by it. Teams like all over in the um, MLS, and there's a few teams in Europe. So I feel like Sagawa would really like prove to be that backup for Abzi, and this might be an opportunity for Brennan to then use Abzi up forward and like left wing because that's his original position. Oh, is I mean, it? Okay. Yeah, I think Sagawa is really going to be surprise everyone. So Abzi's kind of like uh, Alfonso Davies. He's he's kind of more attacking but they kind of had to use him further back he is yeah he, he started in when he was playing in quebec before he joined york he was a left wing and now as he came into york nine in the first game like he came on he was more an attacking player but i guess yeah. they didn't really have an out and out fullback yeah so they, they only played three in the back at the first game yeah so i think once brennan wanted to shift formations like absolutely became that left wing back and then he started to learn, of course, and then become much better. And then he just fell into that left back role really well. What's uh, what's your what's what's the best formation for for York? Uh, in, in your opinion, in my, in, your opinion. In, in my opinion, York needs to play uh, either a four three three, like an attacking, or a four two three one, just something with a can or like center attacking mid. Because last year I found like. With the majority of the formations Jimmy Brennan used, there wasn't really a bridge between the attack and the rest of the midfield and defense. This was a perfect example was when they played Montreal. He played a 4-3-3, but a more defensive one with DKR as like their defensive mid and Murafushi and Aparicio. But then there's so much space between the three up front, which is why Montreal had so much space to come 
operate in that middle. I think having a CAM would also help, like, help attack, kind of, and also provide that little, like, shield in front of our midfield and defense. Yeah, I personally so, yeah, I think, think that a CAM is a very important role in a formation. It's one of the most important, in my opinion. Probably also because I play as a CAM, <laughs> but I really like that role. Yeah, yeah, we really struggle attacking and like having a player who provides assists like week in, week out. And yeah, I think that's what's missing right now in our formation of attacking midfielder, kind of bridge everyone together. Yeah. So York York Nine did they did they kind of under underperform? I'd say for the type like in some for cases, the players they had, I think they did. Honestly, I think so. Like as soon as Ryan Telfer came in. Players like Simon Aji, people like that, they were really expected to kind of like push the same. I thought, honestly, we would make it into the North like Shield. playoffs. Yeah, I I didn't think we would un, like. It, at the end of the day, we finished like mid table, right? So it's not too bad. But with the type of players we had, I in the beginning, everyone was thinking like York is going to be challenging for that title. And right. Yeah, I I think they did underperform in in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, this year I just looking at your team, I'm like, wow. I think yeah, I think they could win this title. So mm -hmm. I'm like worried about York Nine and the other teams. I've been thinking just to myself, who will win the North Star Shield because there's so many great teams. I'm not sure like who because there's so many great teams now. I mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you got um, a couple new players. You took one of ours, Arnone, <laughs> yeah. and uh, and you got uh, Petrasso, which yeah, which Petrasso. I thought was a was a big coup. Like, how did you how did you get Petrasso, and what what do you feel about those two players? Um, Petrasso, I feel it was more like he wanted to come back home. York is like where he's from, and Chris Manala, who he's. Like, like their best friends, like even at the event, Jersey event, I went to the two of them, like they were talking the whole time. You know that there's a connection. As soon as Manella came to York 9, Petrasso was like, man, all of my friends who I've played with, Aparicio, he played with in the TFC Academy. Yeah. I think I think for Petrasso, the main pull for him to come home was the fact that all of his friends and his former teammates and people he loves to be around were now at York 9. And then he, he said in previous interviews he can't wait to play in front of his friends and family in your your region. So mm -hmm. I think that was the biggest pull factor for him. And then obviously Jimmy Brennan and him are quite close. They worked with each other before when Brennan was part of the TFC setup. So oh, they have okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah, Petrasso seems like a like a great player, and again, he's one of those players that I think on the Canadian national team he plays he had nine more caps. right back, and then but in in the CPL he mm -hmm. because he's he's so technically skilled he plays yeah. higher up. Yeah, that's true. Even in, when he played for Montreal, he played in the right back role, but I think. In Valor, they had that right back role already filled, so they knew he's a skilled player. Like, just let him roam free. You saw it with Valor, like Bustos and Petrasso, they were just they relied on them to kind of create all their offense. I right. know, and now Petrasso, Bustos, and Goyet are all gone. Yeah. Goyet went to Halifax, Bustos went to Pacific, and Petrasso went to York Nine. Yeah, exactly. They've Valor's lost a lot of players. I know that's <laughs> that's what I'm. I'm thinking. worried about them. To yeah. be honest, for, yeah. for this season. And I wanted to get your thoughts on Paul Salteri, um, the new assistant coach for York Nine. What do you think about um, him? He seems, uh, I'm like he seems like a great guy, and his message is very clear. He wants his players to work hard, mm -hmm. and. His message is more like, sure, you have the skill, but you can't only get off on just having skill in, in any league. He's, he's got a lot of experience. He played in Germany. He played in England in both the top flights. And when you speak to him, like you talk to some of the players and they're worried like at the training session, if they're not up to a standard, he's going to be on their back. And as a fan, that's what you want. You want your coaches pushing your players 
to work hard. Like, sure, we could have the next uh, Messi type, like, in terms of skill, but if he's not putting in the effort, like, like the perfect example I'd like to use is Cristiano Ronaldo. The guy, he put in so much work, and I think, like, even Sal Terry, that's, that's what he, he wants his players to do. He wants them to put in that extra effort, put in the work, because you can't just get away on skill. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I love that about him. I can't wait to see the players now. They'll, yeah. They seem like they're getting stronger and more physical in their game. So. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. A little worrying for, for the rest of the league. <laughs> I think that myself, cause I, cause I knew Paul Salteri was a good coach, and I had heard a bit of his interview on One Soccer, and I could tell that, like, yeah, his message is very clear. But yeah, I'm worried about him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't worry, he's a he's a, a great guy. In the end, it's benefiting everyone, Canada soccer. So yeah, yeah, right. So, um, is d- d- does Petrasso have any ambitions to to get back on the national team? I think so. I yeah. think he's he's probably come to York with the idea, like he's seen this team now, who's kind of building to couldn't contend, and he's I've I, from what I've heard is John Herdman's been keeping an eye on all of these players who were previously in the national team setup. Mm-hmm. Players like um, Petrasso, like your Manelas, your like all those players over there, and I think coming to York, if they do perform well, I, I don't see why not because Team Canada definitely has struggles in defense and in their kind of right midfield. I'd say in the left, you've got mm-hmm. Alfonso Davies. Who else would you want? But more on that other side, there isn't kind of like a right midfielder, right wing. We're kind of playing like players out of position to kind of fill that spot. I yeah. think if Petrasso can get back, he knows that that spot is where he wants to play. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And who is the most overrated player on York 9? Now, I know you might not want to answer this <laughs> if any of your York 9 fans are watching or if any of the players, but hopefully. None of them are watching this little part, so. <laughs> Overrated player. Am I allowed to say, like, someone who left the team, or no, nah, it's got to be this season? This no, season? Well, fine. Well, I, are you, well, are you talking about, um, well, okay, both, both, do both. Okay, <laughs> both. Okay, I'll, I'll start with, I'll start with the one who left. So yeah. the player who I, I found didn't perform to like my standards, and I think everyone was Ryan Helfer. Yeah. The guy came in with, he was tutored as the top prospect in the league. He's got yeah. so much skill and so much technical ability. I don't think he he performed as to what he wants, knowing him. He's a competitive guy, and he didn't, he didn't do well for the York Nine. I expected him to be that real like talisman for York Nine. There yeah. were so many games where I don't want to say he was a ball hog, but it's almost like he kind of didn't trust his teammates in some games, and and in some games he underperformed. But it was almost like he was being shoehorned into the lineup because he's obviously, as everyone would think, is the best player, right? Yeah. So, when you said past season, I was like, he's probably going to say Ryan Telfer because I've heard so <laughs> many people say the most overrated player of the whole CPL of last season. Was Ryan Telfer? <laughs> so do you, I mean? Do you, do you think it was a like a a motivation issue? He kind of thought he was the most talented, so he didn't try as much. You know, kind of like like relating back to what we were talking about with Salteri. Or I I don't think it's that. I just think like with a player with his ability, you you expect someone like that who comes from who's coming from TFC to be this leader for this new team and. You just couldn't see that when you watch some of the games. He's not hes not a very commanding player, and I think this was his kind of opportunity to... Like, I'm sure TFC sent him to York 9 with the idea that, sure, he could come back if we see he actually does perform to the level we want him to. At TFC, you have all these players who 
are very commanding. They try to lead each other there. And in York 9, you have a new team, first of all, and this is a perfect opportunity for a player like Ryan Delfer to come in and lead some of the younger guys, kind of try to help use his experience to kind of help the team, which I feel like he didn't really do if you watch some of the games. It was more like yeah. some of the games. There was a game against Pacific where he, he was kind of trying to fight with the rest of some of the players. I think it was Noah Verhoeven. Mm. It was it was more like his attitude wasn't there in some of the games, and which to the fans was kind of disappointing because majority of us kind of jumped onto that York 9 bandwagon because of Ryan Belfer. We were right. all TFC fans. Right. Where where, yeah. where did Telfer go? He went to Europe, right? Somewhere he in Europe? He went to Cyprus, a team called Nia Salamis in okay. Cyprus. Yeah. He, he might play in the Europa League if, if it if they make it so And is he still uh is he still like a TFC loan? He's on loan. No, uh TFC released him actually oh. and he didn't get like after his loan ended, they released him, and he. Everyone thought he would come back to York Nine, have that kind of second shot, but I guess wasn't there, and he just went to Europe. So okay, so is that more that that uh, he wanted to do, go do something else, or you know, it was a financial thing, or I guess you don't do you even know. Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure. I know a player of his caliber would command a like a high, bigger fee, and for York 9, who's just, who are now in a rebuild year, I think they kind of wanted to try something else, which you can see they've done now, they've kind of found, found all these hidden gems for much lower price, and if they did have Telfer on the roster, I can't say they would have made some of those signings, so. Right. Yeah. yeah, so who is the most rated player on this, this season? <sighs> I think, I, he's not... I wouldn't say he's overrated. I think just again, Manny Aparicio, he's a he's a good player and he needs to he's a captain at the end of the day and he's he just needs to perform better than than he he did last season. I can't say last season he had a great season. He only popped up with a couple of goals and didn't provide that many assists, and that's what you're expecting from a player who's playing in that central role. Yeah, I found that from Jimmy Bre- yeah, yeah, he he comes from TFC. He's obviously got the experience. He was, I have to say though, he was commanding, and he was he was that player who tried to act like be that leader. But just the, the skill, the skill. I just think he just needs a second chance. It's hard to base off of like one year if they're overrated or not. But I think right. for him. He's the one player that I'm hoping does have like a rebound year. So who is the leader on the field, like in in the first season? I'd say Nathan Ingham. He was just that okay. goalkeeper who would like command his front, like the defense in front of him. You could see him all the time if he was trying to kick a long ball. He'd kind of like point and try to yell at players to make certain runs. And yeah, I think yeah, he was yeah, you need that as a. Yeah. In, in soccer, it's like because the team I play on in uh, in my men's league, yeah, they have you know the goalies always kind of shouting out where to go mm-hmm. and stuff, and that's yeah. really helpful. You know, um, I never realized how important that on field communication was until you start playing at those higher levels, and then you're yeah. it's like it's really important. Yeah, yeah. If, even off the field, you can see that he's just that guy who's trying to get everyone together. I don't know if you guys know this, but recently he shaved his head for charity, and it's it's something. Did he? Yeah, he he had okay. this long hair, and he kind of took had a buzz cut, and he tried to raise money for charity when they were over down there in Florida for preseason, and he tried to get a lot of. He got Manny Aparicio involved, Camilo Ben. Benzi, one of their staff members, he just seems like that guy who just tries to get everyone together. Nice. nice. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's a great quality to have, especially as a goalkeeper. Right. Yeah, I was a bit surprised actually that he didn't win the Golden Glove because I always remember him making these like amazing saves like on like, no one could score on him. Well, yeah. Honestly, yeah, I know. I was, I was pretty surprised too. I, I, to be honest, I, 
I, I, I would, would say is, but people, people could say, like, oh, he's a New York fan, but, yeah, he, I think he definitely deserved it over Carducci. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I would have liked to see Oxner get just because he's local, but <laughs> he, he, was, he wasn't quite the top goal yet. It was his first year professional, so, mm-hmm. but I think he will be in the race if he, yeah. like, in the near future, this year or the next year. Because now that he's getting experience under his belt. But even GM Michael Williams really helps him with just that first year and all of his experience. Yeah, Halifax seems to have a very young team. And I think. Yeah, their average age, age is actually 23. Yeah, it's it seems like they're they're trying to build something there. And you can see that. Like, Jan Michael Williams, like, instead of just re- leaving, he's now become your goalkeeper, goalkeeper coach, coach, right? Yeah. yeah. I think that's great for a team like that to have players who are really invested in building what's there. So yeah, yeah. and both of our goalies are really young. Yeah, yeah. The, the new one. Yeah. Yeah. Jason. Yeah. Yeah. But so yeah. yeah, so tell me about Green Lion TV um, or, or the Green Lions Club. What's what's yeah. what, what what are those about? So, so Green Lions is. Like I said before, it's this kind of student-run supporters group. So, like I said before, Zach Diaz, he's the guy who kind of, he got in touch with York and saying, like, something needs to be done to kind of bridge that gap between the club and the students on the campus. And they're like, sure, here, we can give you a couple season tickets or, like, tickets to try. And you just kind of have to do your thing and try to, like, market people to come to our games. And as soon as I heard about like him doing this, I was like, I have to get in touch with this guy because he's just like me. And then we spoke to each other and we were trying to figure out, like, aside from just getting people to come to the games, what can we get younger people to get? What, how can we draw in younger people? So, and we, yeah, social media was the biggest thing we thought of. And I think, again, for YouTube, like, the reason for Green Lines TV is to give people a platform where they can still keep up with their favorite team without even being at the games. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I think social media, people have so much access. Like, younger people are always on YouTube. And if you kind of give them another thing to watch, it was just something else they could do. Like, and just try to build that fan base. And I think yeah. now we've reached beyond just student supporters. We met a lot of other people who watched our content and found us on Instagram and on Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, so you guys are on you guys are on YouTube, you're on Instagram, what other platforms? Where else um, can people find you? So we have the Green Lions T V on Instagram we're at Green Lions of Y9 and then we're on Twitter as well. I can't remember what the Twitter handle is, but we'll link to it in the description. Yeah, we'll link to it. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. When I find it, I'll send it to you guys. Yeah. And so, and so, is that is that you and Zach? It's together, or or does he he runs the the Twitter and you run the YouTube? He runs the Twitter and uh, he runs the Twitter. I run the YouTube, and then together we kind of collaborate on the Instagram as well. And he's also got a few friends that kind of help him, like kind of outside of the whole social media aspect like they have we have a guy who's creating chants for the supporters group and yeah so okay yeah so are you like second in command or were you one of the yeah i knew you were one of the first ones but were you like second third fourth tenth top like first 20 I, I wouldn't say there's kind of like a command system. It's more like a collaborative effort. It's like somebody just takes one part. I'd say in terms of the YouTube and kind of content we produce, maybe, yeah, I'm at the head of that. But Zach is more of like, he does more like the business side. He kind of gets people onto this student deal for season tickets and stuff like that. So it's it's there's not really a command the kind of rent tier system I feel in our group is more like everyone does their part because we're all hoping to you know, to sell out York Lion Stadium. That's the goal. Right. And do you guys talk to the other supporters groups and, and kind of do collaborative stuff or? Yeah. Um, for Generation Generation uh, 9, they're, they're the biggest uh, supporters group so far for York 9. And we've been in contact with them 
I feel they're more like an ultra kind of group where they have people jumping up and down with the smoke and drums and all. I feel like Green Lines is trying to we obviously we love what they're doing, but we're trying to kind of get the people who are maybe casual fans to come as well, right. which is more of the students and stuff. So, and then we've been in contact with the the new group Danes of York. They they, I think there was a great idea from them. They wanted to start a women's supporters group because really in football yeah. you never see that a women's supporters group. So, yeah, we've been touching with everyone, but everyone's kind of doing their own thing. We're hoping to like. At a game, like we're all part of these different supporters group, but then we kind of meet together as we're all York Nine fans. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds yeah. good. That sounds but it's good. amazing that you have three fan groups. I think that's the most in the league, if I'm correct. I'm, I'm not sure. Actually, that it might be. I, I I don't think we will go over more than like three. I think yeah. anybody can fall into those three kind of groups. Yeah. So. That's cool. And, and oh, oh, go ahead. What um what what team do you think York and I will have the most trouble with? Trouble with uh, I think I think everyone's gonna have trouble with this team is Pacific FC. Their new coach um Pod Modi Ka. He's worked with all of the majority of their, that players in that team. I know he's worked with Taryn Campbell since he was young. And many other players. They're, really? They actually did an interview with... One Soccer is actually doing an interview, like, was doing an interview earlier today. <laughs> probably, uh, it probably ended when we started talking, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he knows all of those players, and he knows how he wants to, like, work with the team. All the players, they know him previously, and I think that's great for a team, for a new coach to come in. Your players already know who he is, and know his style, and some of them have even like played with him before. Like he's not an old coach; like he's yeah. still there in training, working with the players. And yeah, I I think they're they're a team to look out for because those kids like Caden Chung, the Verhoeven, Noah Verhoeven, Zach Verhoeven, Taron Campbell. They're all bright, bright stars yeah. in Canada. I think and get bringing the new coach. I think he's really gonna make them like work well together. Yeah. And who do you wish that York Nine kept in the off season? Right. Now, is it Ryan Telfer? Because you like said maybe it would have good to give him a second chance, or is it someone else? Um, this one's pretty hard, actually. <laughs> I know. I I'd, yeah. I'd say maybe either Rodrigo Gattas or Daniel Gogarty. Daniel Gogarty yeah. was a center back who played for us majority of the season because Roger Thompson ended up having an injury troubles. Yeah. And it was really surprising as to why we let him go. I think Dan Gogarty, like, he played really well. Like, when he was called in, him and Gasparato, they kind of formed, like, a partnership. And, yeah, it was surprising that they didn't pick up on his contract. And I think just having him there... He would help, like, a person. Like, obviously, Arnone has come in, and he fills in that spot. But just keeping Gogarty to kind of keep... You want to keep your defense the, as much... Like, you want it solid. You want, want to keep them intact as much as possible, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I was surprised at some of the... Some of the players at yeah. Halifax didn't pick up. There was a lot of turnover. Yeah. Um, Maybe a bit more than was expected or liked. But um, but well, we'll, we'll have to see. There's, yeah. there's a lot of unknowns with, with, with Halifax. Yeah, no, I yeah. This team it's, is... It's hard to just look at you know a couple of highlight videos and know how they're going to perform on the league because you don't know as well like what kind of competition it's in. And yeah. Stuff no, like I that. Think so. Some of them are... I think they could compete for the North Star Shield. And now I know I may sound crazy saying they finished last place and now they're going to compete for the North Star Shield. But they their main problem, they they could defend. They just couldn't score. They, they relied upon Akeem Garcia the whole time. And now mm-hmm. they have, like, some really good goal scorers. They brought in there were, lot, yeah. there were a lot was, of really close games, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He actually, for his college 
got a hun- beat in 70 games or something, got 101 goals, which beat his record, which is wow. the school's 101 record. goals, wow. Yeah, so... <laughs> But how's that going to translate I know. to the CPL competition? That's, I know, but that's also, that's a big difference. Also, not, yeah. it's not just saying, like, it's a 10 difference. He could probably compete. Yeah. 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 I, I, I think, think, honestly, I think, I don't, I think it's too early to kind of write off any club right now. I think we're all on even slate. Like, if you look at Forge last year, they lost a lot of their key players. Yeah, they lost sure. Tristan Borges. Now, I know it's not the same as losing, like, someone like Kyle Becker, but Tristan Borges registered a lot of assists and a lot of goals. And even their coach um, didn't – he said, like, there, there's some faces that we could bring up, but he's not like, yeah, don't, we, I think we can – he's like, I think we have a few faces that can maybe – fill the shoes of Tristan Borges, not, it doesn't matter about Tristan Borges, we have, like, someone that's definitely going to fill the shoes of Tristan Borges, and, like, Tristan mm-hmm. Borges was a standout player. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's, that's what I want to ask you guys. Oh. What are you- your opinion on Tristan Borges. In my opinion, I think he was overrated for the entire league. Like, yeah, he did well, but he didn't do so well. Like, he's league MVP. He cleared out the entire awards, which, I don't know, I, I didn't think he deserved every one of them. But. I was a bit surprised that he got everyone. Now, U21 player, okay, I think we can give him, I think we should give him at least the U21 player. Um... But yeah, like I don't, I don't think, know. I, I think I thought Tristan he... Borges was really good. I don't really think that he was overrated because he registered like into the double digits assists and like close to that goals. I think so. That's like so. That's quite a bit. And he's mm-hmm. now. But the other yeah. thing is now he's in FIFA because the Belgian league didn't want to have to like deal with a promotion and relegation so they just added more teams to yeah that. he's actually yeah, yeah he's gonna be on in the belgian first division mm. so i thought i thought when he was on the field i was when we were playing against him i, I was always concerned about him like you know same thing with like kyle becker um i was but one person that i was worried about a lot though was Kedel thomas yeah, yeah he's, he's pretty skillful. Yeah, that was too, a nice yeah. little cut back, cut back, cut back, and then go. I, I know. I think that was their goal of the year. Was it? Yeah, yeah. that was a good mm-hmm. one. But I mean, you know, when you think about when you think about Borges, you know, and then you look at like Ryan Telfer, um, you know, Ryan Telfer was maybe underperformed a bit, but I think what surprised me about this league was the quality of it already. How it was all kind of um, even, you know? Um, mm-hmm. I, I think the teams are pretty evenly matched. I mean, Halifax, most of their goals were, were were lost by like one goal. Like we lost at home, I think twice, like one nothing to Cavalry, like right at in the 80th plus minute. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know? and even in and... Forge, we lost, we tied 1-1 one, one because Forge scored like in the 90, 90th, Plus yeah. one minute. And I mean, if, if if the offsides hadn't been called properly, we would have been on to the next league past the, the Ottawa formerly Fury. Ottawa Fury. Mm-hmm. And we would you know, have been playing against and, and, and that surprised FC. everybody. That surprised everybody, I think. Yeah. You know, when, like, not, not just our team, but all the CPL teams versus the MLS teams. I think it was yeah. a lot closer and a lot tighter than, than a lot of people think. So how this gets back to, to Borges is I think that, you know, there, there weren't really, there, there's a lot of evenness, you know, so, you know, just that little bit extra. Yeah. You can see it given to, um, given to this guy, he was certainly like a, a threat on the, on the field, I thought, but you know, there's, there's a lot of good players in the league and, yeah. and, and with the turnover, like not, a, not only like with all the teams, like it's going to be interesting to see how they play. I mean, you look at Pacific you know, with that ultra young team. Now they got a new coach. They've had a whole year playing together. You know, it's 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 gonna be interesting if this if this season can, you know, ever yeah, the get started. The thing I always think about mm-hmm. Pacific is that they have had a year together and they didn't do too much turnover. 
so, and they have a coach that's known them for a little while. So it's almost like they have like an extra two years or something, like three mm-hmm. years, um, with some of the pl- like like three years with some of the players. So that alone is pretty worrisome because you think they're such a young team they haven't had enough experience but when you bring in a coach that's known them for so long they they were good Taryn Campbell was like a golden boot was in the golden boot race and they're fun a fun attacking team now they have Marco Bustos now Mm -hmm. I can say you know they they could be challengers like last year they weren't quite challengers yet but this year they could be challengers and then yeah it's just yeah, but then you try. Then you say, but they're still so young. Will they be even? Will they be able to be contenders? I think in Pacific they got. Even though they're very young, they they look like they're mature players, and they know how to handle themselves well. And I think, yeah, for me, Pacific is going to be very, very interesting this season. Yeah. Yeah. And I also wanted to ask you, where do you? Th- think York 9 will place like what in the like third in like the like second are they gonna win like first um, and third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth now because of the Atletico <laughs> Ottawa yeah um I think again where I honestly I think with the signings we've made they'll need some time to kind of get into the rhythm but after that we should probably end up in... I think there's a new format now for the league, right? In the playoff. There's like three teams that kind of go into the finals oh, and they kind of play yeah, or yeah, something like that. I think we'll definitely be in the top three, at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Do you have any other questions? I had, no, I had one yeah, had after. Questions. Yeah, so... So I'll, I guess I'll finish off with this. So um, you got your plans for the for the the Green Lions. You know, I also saw that you're you're kind of um, doing. You've got your other channel, Nathan FC, yeah. and stuff. So so what are your plans like for just YouTube in general, and you know, going forward this this year? I think for for my own channel, Nathan FC, I've kind of drifted away from that whole like kind of soccer content and i've like you saw the video with the tattoo and then i also did a video where i drove a ferrari i think on my oh, own man. channel it's more like that kind of i have like this series called unscripted where i do things that i've always wanted to do like the tattoo the ferrari or some of those things oh really okay cool yeah yeah so i think i'll kind of stick with that on that channel maybe not post as much but on the green lines, it's kind of fully de- dedicated to soccer. And I think sometimes you need that break in that content that you're making just to keep your mind, like, refreshed and your ideas, yeah. like, um, strong. Yeah. So I think I think of more soccer, like, a lot of soccer on green lines. So. Yeah. Do you have Good any, stuff. like, series that maybe you could give us a sneak peek for any series on green lines? <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's a guy on Reddit. His name is Becker's Forge or something like that. Mm-hmm. And for the game Pest Pest Twenty. Oh yeah, yeah Pest Twenty. Yeah, he's made a data file or data option file where you can import the CPL into Pest. So I'm gonna try my best to see if I can get that on my game as well, and then see if I can be like a York Nine kind of like. Career mode or kind yeah. There's of also like um, FM twenty. They if you get this free add-on, there's also the CPL. We're thinking of getting that. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that as well too. I I, I haven't played a lot of Football Manager, so I'll see if I can get into that. It seems more like a like a more mind game. You gotta work. Yeah, on I the love passing. mind games. I love strategy uh, games. Yeah. So it's there's so much reading when you're learning it. Like they get like there are all these little sections that you have to read. Sometimes you just want to skip it you just want to skip it because there's so much to read Mm -hmm. yeah football manager it's a cool game don't get me wrong but it's just something i think i like playing more fifa and pass yeah i me and i have only played ultimate team but i was thinking maybe on 
my channel at some point i may get into career mode because i've seen a few people do it and i find it really interesting because i used to have this game on my ipad called um first touch 15 and you could buy players you could sell players and i think career yeah. mode is kind of like buying selling because i love playing people but i always love but i love transfers like i think <laughs> it's so interesting for players to go from here to there and here to there and here and there and here and there <laughs> Okay, I've, I've got a question for you. Okay. Say Halifax had all the money in the world and you were to buy a player for the team. You can't be Messi, Ronaldo, or Yeah, Neymar, I know, I know. But I who would you pick? Isco. Who would be your dream son? Isco? Isco? Yeah, I love him. He, all Just all of his like creative moves on the field. I also love Spain. When I was like... I. I was I was born in two thousand and eight, and that's when Spain's golden generation had started. The Euro okay. World Cup and Euro Cup again. When I was two, I've been playing. I played soccer with Daddy in the kitchen and hockey, but I love soccer so much. And the World Cup was starting mm -hmm. around that time, and then we and then we kind of watched um, the World Cup. And in the kitchen, we'd always play. And Busquets pass Iniesta, and Iniesta shoots, and he scores! Woo! And the crowd goes wild. But before, my parents were huge hockey fans. When they lived in Toronto, they'd be like, "Soccer? Oh, this is boring soccer. All I want to watch is hockey." <laughs> But yeah. now I've turned into we're, we're converts. Fan. We're converts. Yeah. What, what about you, Andrew? Is is there one signing you would want to make based on looking at the team, Halifax? Oh, what you guys man. need? I don't know. I wouldn't mind uh, like just a a beast at the base of the midfield, like Sissoko or Partey. Oh, oh, yeah, nice. nice. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, um, yeah, something like that. Just you know, just a nice brick so wall. So lock, lock up, up the midfield. midfield. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how I like yeah. to set up my my FIFA team. Anyhow, is, I like uh, to. S you know. Yeah. In my FIFA team, I'm very attack mind. I'm good at attack. I'm horrible at defense. So I I can be winning three nothing by halftime, and then I kind of like lose my focus. And I'm just like playing like. Uh, I'll win this, and then all of a sudden it's tied up. <laughs> I'm real, so, and in foot champions, I can never win. I'm so good at attack, but I just don't win. I can tie so much, I just can't win. Almost like the Wanderers, I tie so much, I just can't win. <laughs> yeah, foot, foot champions is a struggle. I've gotten on there and they lost so badly. Some of the players on foot champions, they really know how to play, and their teams yeah. are unbelievable. I know. Yeah. What about you for York Nine? What signing? York, what's your dream signing? My dream signing would be um, probably be Bruno Fernandez. He's Bruno Fernandez. Really Does that mean you're a Man U fan? It's not actually. I'm an Arsenal fan. I would take Mesut Ozil in his prime, but right now I don't know if he's uh, signing it. Actually, I'm gonna change that up. I'll take Pierre Emerick Aubameyang. I'm yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I love Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid, and I also like Barcelona, which is so weird because they're all like such big rivals, but I love Diego Simeone. I think he's such a mm. great manager. I love Partey, I love Saul, I love Coque. I wish Griezmann stayed there. Then Real Madrid, I love Isco, I love Modric, I love Tony Cruz, I love James Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. And that, like, I loved all of those players. I love all of those players. And then now with Barcelona, I also really like Ajax. And now Frankie De Jong's gone to Barcelona. Griezmann's gone to Barcelona. And I also <laughs> love the the tiki taka style of play. So yeah. I, I always think to myself, who do you really like? And then I think to myself, I like all of them. <laughs> who do you say you play most like? Who if you have to look at your style of play and pick a player you think you play most like. Um, I try and play like Isco. <laughs> I, try, Isco? Yeah. Yeah, I try to do moves and stuff. I try and do like scissor, then get around. I, I'm very good at keeping the ball in like small spaces, especially if like two people are on me. Like I can get out of that. I can mm -hmm. get out of that. Yeah. yeah, we'll put on some highlights on the channel sometime. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah, you should do like maybe like a disco stuff. comparison. Like, yeah. you know, like <laughs> yeah. disco does. Yeah. We could do a who does it better. <laughs> disco yeah. does the move and and messes it up, hopefully, and then yeah. Jack does the move. And then, yeah, exactly. Something like that, you know. Yeah. But yeah, it's tough these times, man. Hard to get your soccer fix on when, you know, there's, yeah, there's and, nothing on. And it's, it's, it's kind of, yeah, yeah I, we're ending up watching uh, like, Sutherland documentaries are watching Sunderland Till I Die and, and is, now is that the film time? Netflix? Sunderland Till I Die is that the one on Netflix? Yeah. 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 Okay. I'll take a look into that. Yeah, we're in the second season now. No but my mom loves her she she can't help it because her parents made her wait for Christmas and I have no problem with that. I wait for Christmas. She tries to find her presents all the time. She just, she looks something about it and then she says, oh, spoilers, okay, I'll, or like she reads something bad and then she's like, oh, I've already read, read one bad thing, so I'll just read the rest. <laughs> she's not going to be too happy about you to see <laughs> putting that on the, <laughs> on the interview. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And yeah. I just want to watch Champions League because all my practices are at the Champions League time, so we never get to watch Champions League. And now when I'm, and now when I'm not playing soccer, I can't watch the Champions League. <laughs> all right. So any last questions you got? No. Do you have any last questions for us? Uh, really. I, I guess like, who do you think is gonna come out on top this year, CPL? Man, I don't know. I'm just smart enough not to. Not to guess. <laughs> I'll leave that. I'll leave that to the uh, to the pundits. You know, you know, let them let them decide. It's you it's, know, unless I re I have to research more about like all of the teams because I've researched about them, but I need to do more research into some of the other into some of the other teams, preferably like cavalry, because I need to because I knew cavalry was really good last year, but I'm not sh I'm wonder because their team was like made up of like two past teams almost, like I heard. Like so, a lot right. of the players knew each other, so I was thinking maybe Cavalry just there were so many players that knew each other. It was kind of like the gelling thing that put them ahead of most mm -hmm. of the other teams. And well, they lost Waterman now. Well, yeah, yeah, but still, he's with Montreal. Yeah, I know a center back is a big thing to lose, but still, so maybe Cavalry isn't gonna Cavalry isn't gonna be as well. I I think Cavalry's still gonna be really good, but are they gonna be as well? Oh, and I forgot to tell you earlier, but the Wanderers are do lives on Instagram with their players. They do it mm -hmm. like every couple of days with their players. And so many players have just said, there are no problems with our team. Like last year, we could see that there are some, like a few things that we need to work on. But they just seem so confident about their chances for the, that they're going to do well. Like they're, I really think they're going to do well this year, even though they came in the last place that Last year, I, I think it's more because of just their attack. They didn't have enough goal scoring ability. Yeah, yeah, I think Halifax, I'm, I definitely have a little soft spot for them. I just love what they're doing there. And I guess next time I watch a game, I'll keep an eye out for you on the pitch side, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'll probably see him. Uh, if it's the same as last year, he was off in the one on the on the camera side, on the middle, in the, on like the by the center or, line. Yeah, on the middle or on the left, but, usually. Yeah. Yeah, you'll you'll probably see them. So hopefully, yeah. hopefully they'll get started soon. It doesn't look like it's it's going to be for a while, unfortunately. So it looks yeah. like we're we're stuck with FIFA and and Perfect. doing our our other working on our other channels. Yeah, yeah. A bit, so Perfect time to try career mode for the first time and to do interviews. Yeah. <laughs> but we yes. will put yeah we'll put your um your contact information and for the Green Lions in the description. Yeah, just and, email uh, so us people can, your Twitter. So people can get okay. in touch, uh, touch with you and start, you know, connecting with you if they're, if they're York Nine fans as well. Yeah. Actually, I've got an idea. How about if the season does start up and York Nine and Halifax, there was supposed to be like the first game. Do you guys want to do like a little preview for that oh, game? Yeah. Maybe we'll yeah, get sure. on and do one for yeah. each show. Yeah, yeah that, that sounds, sounds awesome. Good. Yeah. yeah, let's definitely do it. Fun, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and we can debate on who is going to win and why. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the game. they both really improved, so it's so you could, so yeah, that will be something to look forward to. Great idea, I'm excited. I'm looking forward Great to idea. it. 
So thank you again for um, saying yes to this interview. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah you guys are a lot of fun to talk to. Who would be who would know York and I, and we thought of you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for thinking of me. Great. Well, yeah. we'll uh, we'll check out your other yeah. channels, and uh, we'll definitely keep in yeah. touch. Thanks yeah, for doing this, Nathan. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Thank, thank you guys so much. Right. Take care. Yeah. Take care. See you. Bye. Take care. Bye.